cycling discussion on crank length. The other day I posted a video on crank length and some of the factors, some of the things to think about when choosing a crank length. And also I mentioned just as a general statement that my philosophy on crank length is to choose the shortest crank that will serve your needs. So I have a 175 millimeter crank on uh, several of my bikes and I also have a 170 millimeter crank. Um, in fact, the research, even though I don't find it to be that applicable, the J.C. Martin research suggests that the cranks that range between 165 and 175, for the majority of cyclists, there was no change in power output. So if that's true for the majority of cyclists, then you would naturally want to choose the shorter crank length because of the reasons I explained in that you will slow down the muscle contraction rate and you will also reduce the muscle contraction length. All right, so here, here's the infamous whiteboard. I know you are all anxious for me to dive directly into the whiteboard. So let's go back and revisit my, my little man sketch I did the other day where I, I, I showed you that the upper torso, this is your torso and where, what a, whatever angle it is with respect to the to level or, or the horizon, that is the angle that you naturally ride your bike at. Everyone is different because we all have different flexibilities and we have different lengths. Our top tube is, the top tube lengths of our bikes are different. Our handlebar, our, everything that's part of the bike is subtle, is slightly different. So I'm just going to create an arbitrary angle. And then I'm going to use another angle here to show you the, the femur. So that would be your hip, and your hip is stationary. It's sitting on the saddle of the bike. So I drew this little triangle with these lines to represent a fixed point. And with this fixed point, I also drew a circle. The circle just means that this, that this structure here can rotate, okay? That's all that means. But it cannot, move, it cannot translate horizontally, and it cannot translate vertically, and it cannot translate in and out of the page. That's really all that symbol means. But I want to explain that just so you understand what we're doing here. Okay, so this is the torso, and I'll just put, there's the person's head, okay? This is their femur, and then this is their fibia and tibia, okay? And this is their, that is just simply their ankle, and then their foot would be on here somewhere as well. Now, this is where the pedal would be attached, right? Somewhere on the ball of the foot. Most bike fitters aim for, and this is a bit off topic, but you can kind of see what I'm doing here. If I drew an XY axis through here, and I drew a vertical line through here. Most bike fitters, when the crank itself, let's say here's our crank. Um, oops, I drew that wrong. Sorry, let me back up. So let's say we drew our, uh, that's a chain ring. Let's say our, our horizontal position was like that, okay? So there's your crank arm. Okay, when the, when the crank is horizontal, the goal for a lot of fitters, and this is a starting point, it's not, a, it's not an exact thing, is to try to align a plumb that would pass in front of the knee over the ball of the foot. And that right there, that point of contact, is generally where your cleat would be positioned so that your foot, the ball of your foot is centered over the axle, the pedal axle. Okay, so anyway, Aside, from, so whatever, that, that doesn't matter. What we're talking about now is we're gonna look at crank length. So here's your, here's your chain ring, right? Here's your chain, goes back to the cassette. So what's going on when we talk about um, crank length, how it affects the biomechanics part of this, is that when the crank length gets longer, let's say this is our starting point, and let's say this is a 165 millimeter crank, okay? If we extend this crank out, we make it longer. We make it a one, we make it a 175. So we make it 10 millimeters longer. We're effectively moving the position of the toe forward. And that changes this, 
interior angle here. That's alpha 2, remember? And then this was what, alpha 1 we used? We'll stick to that nomenclature. So alpha 1 and alpha 2. By changing the location of the, the length of the crank, we change alpha 2. So what a lot of bike fitters will be required to do in that situation, because now would be required to do would be to move the seat forward. The reason is because if you just now redo this, let's say now we, we, we now have to hinge the foot here to get to there, now the plumb over the knee is no longer in alignment. So to, to compensate for that, we now need to push, we need to move the seat forward. That'll bring the knee joint forward, back over, and recenter it. Okay? That's how that that's what that adjustment does. So the problem we're gonna run into now is if we started off with a 165 and we kind of map it through the full pedal circle, right? Here's our full pedal circle. The pedal must travel through that. Our new circle is now a concentric circle that's now longer and larger in diameter. And if you go back to the just the basic understanding of circles, the diameter or the circumference of the circle, pardon me, circumference of the circle is proportionate to this constant we call pi. That's the ratio of the circumference to the diameter. So the ratio, this pi is just a ratio. And that ratio is universal for all circles. Okay. Um, so now we increase the length of the crank, we've increased this circle, the, the path that the pedal will travel through. And what we've done by, what we've essentially done to this person is now we've made their joints collapse more. Because when the pedal comes all the way up to this point here, the knee joint, this, this, this thing does not change the length, it must rotate up. So let's do that. It rotates up, it stays the same length, and then the knee has to be down. This is an extreme angle, of course, right? I've, I've totally exaggerated this because I just am trying to show you and make a point. So now, look at this. This angle's real tight. This is alpha two, and this is alpha one. See how tight these angles get? And then when you extend them back to this, when the pedal goes to this point, now we have to go, we're basically a straight line almost, right? We're almost a straight line because this is such an extreme change. So that means the muscle contraction has to go from, from really close together to really stretched out. So that's the contraction length. And that's what I was talking about in the video yesterday was just how much more length is needed when you increase the circle, the, the circumference of your pedal circle. And we, I showed some research that talked about how increasing the muscular extension length decreases the muscle's ability to generate force. Okay, so the force that you're able to produce with a longer crank is lower than it is with a shorter crank. The actual force that the body can create but because a bike is a mechanical system and it has a crank which is a lever, the longer lever gives you more torque. And torque goes back, and so, so when it comes to looking at the power output, power, if you recall, was equal to work divided by time, and work is just force times the distance divided by the time, right? And force, is what we're pushing on the pedal and distance is the, the distance of the circumference of the circle. So what happens by putting a longer crank, the longer crank is compensating for the lower force you're able to generate because you have more leverage. The problem then is, that's the next part of this discussion, the problem with doing that is you have the rate of muscle extension. So now you have so you have the distance that the muscle extends, but now you have the rate of the extension. Now, when you have a short crank, the distance that the, these angles increase and decrease is less. So that means the muscle contraction length is less, which also means, it's also true, that for a specific cadence, 
the rate that the muscle is contracting is also slower. So you have a slower rate of contraction and you have a higher force. So the power becomes more or less neutral. It becomes a neutral power. So I can do 400, let's say I can do 300 watts. I don't want to use 400 because that's probably too much. Let's say I can generate 300 watts for um, 10 minutes. Let's just say that. That's probably true actually, but hold on. All right, I'm back, sorry about that. I've got some uh, organic, vegan, black bean chili that I made today. I'm really excited about that. All right, so anyway, um, so coming back, so we have three, I'm able to produce, let's say 300 watts for 10 minutes of time. I mean, it doesn't matter, it could be 20 minutes, it could be five minutes. The idea here is that I can produce this wattage in a number of ways. I can produce it with lower force, longer distance with the same cadence, or I can produce it with a higher force, a higher crank, but a longer period of time. Um, I can produce it with a lower force and or with the same force and a shorter distance, but in a, a lower period of time. So there's a number, of, so because of this equation over here, there's a number of th things going on. And the one that's always a mystery, I think, to most people is the force number, because I think for most people, they just assume that they can create the same amount of force and doesn't matter whether or not, doesn't, it's not affected by crank length, but actually force is directly related, directly affected by crank length because of these angles and because of just the limitation your body has in range of motion. So for small changes in crank length, I think it's a true, it's, it's probably true to think that you can produce the same force within a small range of crank lengths. But when you start getting further out, when you start getting to extreme crank lengths, like what we saw in that study where they went all the way down to like 145 and all the way up to 190 or even larger, when you start getting out into these really extreme uh, crank lengths, then then definitely the force can, the, the difference in the ability to generate force becomes much, much more exaggerated and obviously much great and much easier to measure the difference. But in this range here, kind of the normal standard range of bike components, you don't see, it's hard to measure that force difference. And, and, the, and the reason it's hard to measure is because when we do studies and research, we, we're only looking at short periods of time. My theory is, and, and this is unfounded and it's my opinion and it's just based on my experience, but when you have a, if you were to ride at the higher end of this spectrum, you would probably find you'd be more fatigued in the long run than if you were down here on the lower end of the kind of, the lower end of the general spectrum. And we'll call this the general spectrum between 165 and 175. Because that's true, you know, most crank, most bike component manufacturers make cranks within that re, re, uh, range, excuse me. Okay, so did I cover the contraction aspect of it? I guess I didn't. So what, just, just to come back, so contraction rate, that, that is how fast the muscle has to contract to produce the force, is altered by how long the crank is. Because when the crank is shorter, the distance of these, these the change in these angles is less, and therefore, because the angle is less, the, the distance that the muscle contracts is also less. And because the distance is less, um, the rate at which the muscle needs to contract to, to turn this pedal around at a specific RPM, um, it will be less. You see what I'm saying? Like it, if you want to speed up your, if you change your cadence, then you change the whole, this whole discussion. What I'm trying to say is all things considered equal, cadence being equal, just changing the length of the crank will change the rate at which the muscle must contract to physically turn the crank all the way around in one circle. I, I mean, I'm hoping that this is clear now. I'm hoping what I'm saying is making sense. 
because muscle length and contraction rates are, are connected together through the cadence. Now, of course, if you change the cadence, that's like changing the gears. I mean, you can change things around. These extreme angles, in my opinion, are less advantageous for cycling than gradual angles and um, keeping things more relaxed, if you will. Okay, that's it. That was my follow-up to the video I made the other day. So I hope this helps clarify a few things. Um, please comment on this. Please let me know if you know of any other research. And um, I'm always open to hear other interpretations. So, All right, well, that's what I wanted to cover in today's video. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's coming up, Happy Hanukkah, you know, all those things. You know, Happy Holidays, I guess, is the way you're supposed to say it.